it took me a while to get myself together before I could record this video. I needed to calm myself down because of the Supreme Court decision to make same-sex marriage a right nationwide and also for what in my opinion was a slap in the face of God to light up the White House in the colors of the gay pride flag. To me, that was just a total show of disrespect to the Most High God it was a it was a, a a show of disregard to millions of american people recently with everything going on i started looking you know for for leaders as a black woman and you know a person who has gone to church i've been in church since i was a child in my grandmother's house i mean church is just a part of my life in one way shape or the other and i'm 60 years old now so f from my culture it's common to look to church to give you words of wisdom, you know, to hear what God is saying about a situation. And so as a result of that, I realized that I had been maybe brainwashed into thinking, you know, that's where the leaders are going to come from. They're going to speak up for us. I kept looking for leaders to speak. I kept looking for black leaders, somebody in the church to wake up and say, this stuff is wrong. I kept looking to leaders to talk to us about Jade Helm. I kept looking for leaders. And... I ended up being rebuked, I think, you know, in a way by God, because that's not who we're supposed to turn to. The kingdom of God is in everyone who is a believer of Jesus Christ. And he has given us the great commission in Matthew at the end. It tells us to go and tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Warn people. We're supposed to let people know what's going on spiritually. And so just to be plain, the leader is in me. The leader is in you. And it was wrong for me to look to somebody else to do what God has groomed me to do. And that's to speak up and just tell you the blunt truth. Part of the truth is I needed time to forgive President Obama. I'm so disappointed 
in this man. It's only a few people that I've ever really supported politically. But for his first term in 2008, I did support him. I gave of what little money I had. I sat on the phones and called people to remind them to go and vote. I tried to make an intelligent choice between who I had to vote for, and that was John McCain, or to vote for President Obama. And then President Obama being a black man, I wanted to have a black man in the office because it had never happened before. And I thought it was our time. I remember when Jesse Jackson ran, a lot of people said, well, it's not time yet, it's not time. Well, when will it be our time, I thought. And so I voted for President Obama. But President Obama lied. He said that he was a Christian. And that's another reason why I voted for him. Now, this is in 2008. And I had such hope that he would, to the best of his ability, turn things around. And President Bush had just run us into the ground financially. You guys remember we were going through this horrendous crash financially. And I just, I just prayed. I said, oh Lord, please. You know, let, let this man turn things around. And I was proud of him. And at the same time in, in disbelief that he was elected, you know, and I was like, oh my God, you know, we have a black president finally in America after all this, these years, you know, and I had great hopes that it would turn things around racially in our country. But President Obama, you lied, you lied. And people can say, well, you don't know what's in his heart. You're not God. You're absolutely right, I'm not God. But God told me and you believers to look at the fruit that's the way we are to judge, to judge by what people do. And God said in his commandments that we are not to serve any other God. We're not to bring any other God before him. We're not to do that. And so you can't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in Allah at the same time. You can't bow to the most high God and bow to some God named Allah. You lied, President Obama, and you knew it. And because of that, the country that I served in the Air Force, the country that my aunt served and my cousin served and my uncles served in the military because we wanted to see this country grow greater and greater. We had great hopes that that was also a way that my people, my Black American people could move up and not be mistreated and hated and treated unjustly. And so we serve this country. 
We wanted the best for this country. And I still do. It's, it's so sad, really, when you think about June the 26th, 2015. That will be a day of infamy in the United States of America. And it hasn't welled up yet, but I know me and what'll probably happen is it'll finally come to a head and I'll just cry it out and I'll feel better. But today I have to do something that's more important. I'm making this video so that you know, I stand on the Lord's side. If you recall when the children of Israel were initially going to go into the promised land, all of them except Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephune died in the wilderness because they didn't believe God. Joshua and Caleb lived and God said about his servant Caleb that Caleb had another spirit with him. And as a result, he was brought into the land that he went in and his seed possessed it after he passed away. But those two men lived to be a good age. And when they finally did go into the promised land, they were just as strong as the young ones that went in with them who did believe. But, you know, I kind of look at what's going on in churches today and I kind of compare it to the children of Israel who didn't go into the promised land because they didn't believe. I compare it to what's happening in the churches now. And that's another reason why I was so disappointed. I had to think long and hard about what happened in that church, Mother Emmanuel, AME Church in South Carolina. And I, I looked at a lot of people's opinions and how they, they felt about it. And one such opinion stuck out to me in this video where the people were, were saying, didn't the Holy Spirit warn anybody in there? I mean, all these people in a Bible study in church and the Holy Spirit didn't warn the pastor or anybody of danger and let the man sit right next to the pastor and they all got shot. Did they run? It was one man, one gun, and all these people died. Was there no prophet or anything? And and I, I listened to this and I thought, well, you know, wait a minute. It's, it's good to have a prophet to prophesy to you ahead of time, but we can't put people in God's place. We If, if, if the person is a true prophet of God, that Holy Spirit is the one that's given them the gift. And each person who is a believer has the Holy Spirit in them. And I know for a certainty that the Holy Spirit will give you a warning. Like, you know, no, don't go there, don't do this. Get up and leave now. He will grab you up out of a place. It's happened to me. I know he will do it. And so 
I considered what they said, but I concluded that this was simply the will of God for their life at this point in history. And I think it serves as a wake up call to us that we better tune in to the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit because certainly we cannot trust men. So on June the 26th, 2015, who President Obama really is, was made plain and clear for all. On the same day, he was giving the eulogy for Reverend Clementa Pickney. He boldly saying amazing grace as he looked behind him to see if the elders of the church were going to back him up. But see, it was a setup Because what he was really doing is, is he was really saying to us that we are wretches too. Don't forget it. Don't Christians, don't you get up on your high horse. Jesus saved a wretch like you too. On June the 26th, 2015, the same day, in the afternoon, the Supreme Court was ruling that same-sex marriage was a right for every American nationwide. We don't care what you states say. We are saying every gay couple can get married. On the same day, after singing Amazing Grace, at 7 o'clock p.m., the rainbow color started shining at the White House. You see, he knew. President Obama, he knew what was getting ready to go down. And he rejoiced in it. I had a chance to do the, the Rose Garden uh, celebration of uh, the court decision around same-sex marriage. I did not have a chance to comment on how good the White House looked in rainbow colors. Uh, that made it uh, a really good week. To see people gathered in an evening outside on a beautiful summer night uh, and to feel whole and to feel accepted uh, and to feel that they had a right to love. Uh, that was pretty cool. That was a good thing. Now, President Obama, you say that the buck stops with you. For ultimately, the buck stops with me. Well, okay then. Since the buck stops with you, when the judgment comes, don't be surprised if the judgment starts with you. Judgment from God. This is not a hate speech video. I am not making any kind of threat. I'm just saying to you that God is not pleased and he's already uh, told us in Romans chapter three, verse four, to let God be true, but every man a liar as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So I'm going to let God be true. I'm going to believe him. And I'm going to remind you that God is no one to play with. In 1 Samuel, Chapter five, we hear about 
a, a place called Ashdod. And the people of Ashdod believed in this pagan god named Dagon. The Philistines were the people who took the Ark of the Covenant into Ashdod, which they had secured in winning a particular fight with the children of Israel. They took the ark, brought it into the house of Dagon, and set it by Dagon. The next morning, they went in and they found that Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant. The next day, they came in and they found that Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold and only the stump of Dagon was left. The hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod and God destroyed them. People of America, it's time to pray. It's time to pray like you have never prayed before because this blasphemy, this insult to the Most High God, I just honestly don't believe it's gonna go unnoticed. We have killed millions of babies and God has held his hand back. And now this. I've been praying and I've been saying to the Lord, Father, how much more, how much more? If, if you don't judge us, you're going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Father, please make this stop because not everybody is in agreement with what President Obama is doing. I am trying so hard to be respectful because he is the president of the United States and God is the one who put him in to place but he gave the American people a president after their own heart. I say it this way because I too am an American, but I do not agree and I do not stand with President Obama or the people in this government that are making laws that they don't read, that are killing babies, that in 2012, when President Obama was going up for re-election, they didn't even want to include God or supporting Jerusalem on the Democratic platform. And that's the reason why I didn't vote for President Obama in 2012. And also, there's a very important lesson to be learned in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 35 through 37. The word of God says, And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Ezon Geber. Then Eliza, the son of Dodava of Moresha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because thou hast joined thyself with Ahazia, the Lord have broken thy works. And the ships were broken 
that they were not able to go to Tarshish. Years of, ago, God brought this scripture to my face and taught me that it's better to walk alone than to join yourself with someone who is doing wickedly. Again, you are to make a decision according to their fruit. I look at all the things that's going on in this country. At one time, we were the leader of the free world. That leadership is fading day by day, but people are still following some of the things that America is doing. Fortunately, I know of some countries in Africa where the people, the leaders have said, Obama, don't come over here talking about your homosexual beliefs and, and, and pushing those on us. But I don't hear anyone else saying that here. And the few that I do hear, I should correct that and, and say the few that I do hear, where is all the fervor and energy of you speaking against this that you use when you're trying to raise money? I can hear you when it's time to pass the plate, but I don't hear you when it's time to speak God's truth. And the reason why that truth is so important is because people of whatever race, creed, or color that you are, that hear my voice. If you've decided to live a homosexual life, you're in sin. But your sin is just like the sin of someone who is an adulterer, a fornicator. Why? Because you're sinning against your body. And whether you believe God or not, or whether you say you do believe God, but you want to bend the Bible to fit your actions. Again, God is not mocked. And your body is still the temple that God intended to fill with his spirit. God loves you. And he doesn't want you to die and go to hell. And if you're having sex of any kind and it's not approved by God, it's not done in the right way in what he considers marriage, his spirit cannot be in you. And so that's the reason why, while I recognize if you're an American citizen, you're paying taxes, you want to have the same rights as any other American. But I'm speaking to you spiritually and I'm speaking to you in love. This world is temporary and there are more things important in our existence than temporary pleasure with another human being, especially if it goes against God's will for our lives. So I hope that you will consider what I'm saying and understand that your decisions, even though it's sanctioned by the government and applauded by the president, it's a disappointment to God because it's tying God's hands 
And when you die, you will have to go to hell. And the word says that God doesn't want any of us to perish. And I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to love you by telling you the truth. Now the president tells us that we need help changing our religious beliefs. But the truth of the matter is, we all need help changing our sinful ways. We need to pray, America. We need to pray. And here's a young lady who is filled with the Holy Spirit who's going to lead us into prayer right now. America, my God Almighty. America, God is not pleased with you. There's too many things happening on this land that God is not a part of. There's too many things happening that God is not pleased with. And America will not escape God's wrath. Jesus, have mercy. They're going to be catastrophe. They're going to be disasters on this land that no scientist, no meteorologist can predict because God is not pleased with America. Jesus, have your way, oh God. Lord, we rebuke everything that is not of God. We cancel everything that is not of God Almighty God. We bring down everything that is not of the Holy Spirit, oh God Almighty. We're going to tear down everything that's not of you, oh God Almighty. Lord, I pray that you go before us, oh God, and you make every crooked path straight, oh God Almighty. Because we can't do nothing on our own, oh God Almighty. We pray that you'll be merciful unto us, oh God. We pray for mercies, oh God. Be merciful unto America, oh God Almighty. Be merciful, oh God. They're going to be destruction. They're going to be catastrophe, oh God. Because God is not pleased with you. God is not pleased with you. But God, we ask you to be merciful unto us, oh God. We know we're not deserving, God. But be merciful unto us, oh God. Be merciful, Jesus. God, I command every soul, oh God. God, into your hands, Jesus. Remember us, oh God. Remember us, Jesus. Lord, I command America under the blood of Jesus Christ Almighty God. I command America, oh God, into your hands, Jesus. We command the body of Christ, oh God, to rise up, oh God Almighty, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because now is the appointed time, and now is the day of salvation. merciful unto us, oh God. God, be merciful unto us, oh God Almighty. Be merciful unto us uh, as children of God. Uh, got to put on the armor and stand up. Uh, arise, oh God Almighty. It's time for you to arise. Uh, children of God, arise uh, and preach the gospel. Don't be a sideline. Uh, don't get on anybody's bandwagon uh, because they're heading straight for hell. Uh, so many people are saying uh, that America have made another milestone, uh, but they're not telling you uh, that America made another milestone uh, going straight to the pit of hellfire. Oh God Almighty. Lord, I put America before you. Cover us, oh God, under the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say when you see the blood, God, that you will pass over us, oh God. Be merciful unto us, oh God. We're not deserving, but remember us, oh God Almighty. America, God is not pleased, and we will not escape God's wrath unless you turn to Jesus Christ. You got to turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. As I turn to Jesus Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. As I turn to Jesus Christ, that too late shall be your cry. Too late shall be your cry. There's judgment coming. There's judgment coming, oh God. There's judgment coming, oh God. It's too late, America. Too late, America. Too late, 
America. God be merciful unto us. God be merciful to let America. You got to take heed to God's word. It's God's word. It's not mine. It's not my word. It's not my word. It's not my word. It's not my word, America. Take heed to God's word. I said it's not my word. There's going to be trouble up on this land because you remove God out of the center. So there's going to be trouble up on this land. There's going to be catastrophe. Your scientists can't predict. Meteorologists can't predict. Oh, God. There's going to be trouble up on this land. America, it's too late. It's too late. Mr. President, I love you, but what's next on the agenda? Because I ain't going to hell with you. My God Almighty, children of God, arise now and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's our duty to defend God's word. Because there's truth in God's word. Too late, America. America, too late shall be your cry. Too late shall be your cry. Too late. Too late. Turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. I pray that God be merciful unto every one of us. God bless you.